This is a quick update on the OEAG project here at Overidon.com, Overidon TV. Uh, let's take a look. Well, let's do a little compare. Okay, the idea, the whole idea about what we're working on here is trying to make a larger, heavier, inefficient radiometer type device that has a rotor stator inside. Um, hasn't really it hasn't been disproven properly um, the people who I've talked to um, don't have the same kind of evidence that um, I think um, I would say there's a lot more evidence disproving uh, neodymium based perpetual motion than there is uh, disproving the possibility of uh, using um, the process by which a radiometer works in a larger system. In my opinion, the radiometer is not being moved by um, light, which is already which has already been basically the, the latest theory says it's it's not being moved by light it's being moved by um the small amount of air particles that are in there because it's not a pure vacuum it's a near vacuum okay um there's also there's also um several websites where they teach how to make your own without a vacuum at all it just doesn't work very well so that's just a little jar thing so here's the main piece uh, here is a low friction, high weight device. You can see my spinning is much better now. You know, thing, uh, my uh, my design for this 3D model plastic piece is uh, working out quite well. Um, it's not perfect though. I want I want it to actually go over the sides. Oh, let me put this in here. I want it to actually go over the side here, so it's like really in there um, I'm actually even considering making a um, almost a connector piece so this piece would only connect to a connector piece that way I wouldn't have to be um, um, if I made one that like just sucked in there perfectly it's like without needing glue then I can make another kind of neck piece that is glued into that piece so that way I wouldn't have any glue in this area and um, that would help for doing um, refinements and experiments because then I wouldn't be having to um, clean this and um, so I'm, I'm already I'm already uh, facing the um, the problem of need, that I know I'm gonna have to end up cleaning it if I put any glue in this metal area I don't want to do that because if I do that then it increases the chance that I'll have to replace this thing because even little pieces of glue with little pieces of plastic eventually the thing will just kinda like spin like that see even the slightest misalignment makes it so it doesn't spin well. So you can see this is kind of imitating a radiometer, right? Um, I'm already foreseeing problems with this. Um, this here is way too thin. I like this original design I had of a more of a Triskelion based thing. Um, the problem is, is I didn't know how to make it where I would make the 3D um, model pieces in black and white because most of the 3D printed options I see are black or white but if you want to do a multicolor it's black and charcoal gray and if you know anything about a radiometer it's not white and charcoal gray it's white and black so it's got to be perfectly black and perfectly white so that's why I went with taking two pieces and putting, making them so they would work together. Now I didn't actually glue these together yet because there was actually no point. It's not thick enough. Um, the veins of my uh, OEAG device is going to need to be very thick and heavy in order to move this very heavy piece here.
And when I say it's very heavy, it's not very heavy. It's just relatively heavy compared to this thing, which is fe feather light. Um, the concept here is that this uh, is a contained system, okay? And so even though the pieces are heavier and less efficient than this system, I my hypothesis is that it'll still move if I design it properly and the reason why is because I'll be able to focus a lot more uh, heat into this system because it's bigger so um, this one this thing will start moving rather quickly with just 98.6 degrees here or 98.3 or whatever a hand is I mean this thing you can already see it was going one direction there it is it's already starting to move the other direction so this thing is um, you know just a hand which isn't even hot at all we're not even dealing with the directed sunlight at all now if you look at my other video I'll put I'll do a link um, uh, suggested uh, video in the um, in the end card for like the design with a parabolic mirror attached to it but and, you know the people who have been following this you're gonna see that this is is getting a lot closer to the original uh, concept but it's different I mean I'm uh, I'm already thinking well I'm gonna need five veins if not more to move this heavier thing I'm gonna need um, you know four vein radiometer thing is gonna work this is actually when I looked at it, um, it's uh, it looks more like a uh, part of a turbine, okay, to me. And so you know, I'm like, huh, that's interesting. S well, why why would I make it like a turbine? Well, if I know that it's going to be hot, right? I know the system is going to be hot in here, okay. It's going to be hot. It's going to be moving clockwise. And I'll do a link to my clockwise, counterclockwise video too. Okay? So it's then this is going to be a hot system. So this is actually, I'm actually thinking about making um, the OEAG is going to be the base system. And then um, I might call it like an OHEAG for heat or hot or something like that. Um, because that is. Um, a Triskelion based system where it knows it's going to be moving clockwise is going to be more like a turbine and it won't move counterclockwise if it's in a cold environment okay because I'm going to make three actual versions one that's going to be a neutral version that's made for hot or cold environment and it's going to be very inefficient like we're going to be taking like an inefficient concept and making it even more inefficient, almost worthless. But the point of this, the reason why I'm doing the worst one first is because I want to, um, I want to, um, have at least one experiment do something. That's all it, that's all it has to do. It's kind of like with my programming and stuff. Uh, I'm not telling it to do everything. All it has to do is show me a little text field that says how many cards are in the array. Great. I can build off of that. Okay. So when I'm looking at my uh, designs here, you can see. Show me on the mouse here. I never deleted any of this stuff. The Triskelion is here, still here, but what I'm probably going to end up doing is making it so this piece is much larger, more like an arrowhead as opposed to a thin little vein. And that will make the 3D printing process easier because it'll be thicker and it'll also increase the mass of the, um, the whole thing. Okay, so because the amount of energy I'm planning on directing at this thing to get it to move like just a little um, micron of distance, well not micron, I won't be able to detect that, but like just a few like, um, to, to get it to just like move a few like, uh, you know,
couple half of a rotation I'm going to be using a parabolic mirror on the thing or an equivalent so there's going to be a lot of heat hitting it so I'm not too worried about the weight of um, the shaft I'm not too worried about the weight of the veins or the weight of any kind of triskelion based uh, device um, I've had people ask me well wait a minute how how is this going to move it's not gonna move and the my response to it is ion drive and you might be thinking like wait ion drive that's used in space well how ion drive works is that you have um, you have space right space is even though it's not a pure vacuum let's just pretend this is space right space is not a pure vacuum there's still a little bit of air dust energy in it but it's basically a vacuum kinda like this this is basically a vacuum but not quite this is less of a vacuum than space is space is even closer to a vacuum than that so here you go let's say you have a little thing and you're in space and then it shoots out a little bit of ions this way well that just like a um, little worm what are those called you know the worms that that are really small and they go shoot around okay whatever so let's say that stuff is going this way okay well if it shoots the ions this way then the device is gonna fly this way let's say it's a satellite or a little ship or something usually like a probe a lot of probes Use it, okay. It goes forward a lot, but it, this isn't good enough. It actually needs to get all the way to here. So what it does is, it um, does it again, shoots out more, and then it shoots out the same amount of ions, but it gets that far. How did it do that? Well, since uh, space is low friction, low friction. it doesn't lose all of the energy from the last um, ion push so what happens is you get kind of a um, uh, a combination of minus you know the little bit of friction right and then the next one is going to make it go like that this is a very crude thing okay so basically, you know, it's like because it never, it's not like a car driving on a road where there's tons of friction. That's the same concept that I'm shooting on is that this is going to be a low friction but high work environment. So the, um, even though it's moving in a rotating, it's moving in a rotational way. Well, it's, we already know it can move in a rotational way. I like how this is shaped like a uh, sphere, light bulb kind of shape. Why? Because that's over. It's it's already geared for a tor toroidal system, which uh, and toroids are how um, most turbine engines are based off of a toroid anyway, which is basically a donut shape, a glorified donut. This is not as clean of a toroid as this, but. I don't need it to be. I don't need it to be as perfect as this. And also, it's close enough. I think this will be fine, especially if I slam it with enough light, enough heat. Okay, so that's what um that's where we're at right now. So I just want to give you all a little update on that. And uh, also, I've been noticing we've been getting um, significantly more uh, views on the channel. Very extremely excited about that. Um, I apologize for how long this process has been taking. Uh, there were some complications in the company that was making my parts, and so this little black one took literally forever. So this, I can honestly say, the um, duration between these iterations has not been my fault because I've had the money to uh, purchase the parts, but they have not been made on time, and so that is, um, yeah, that's not an Overdon issue. Let me tell you. That and then and also, um, other good news is that the company that was making these parts is um, making them at a lower cost and they're improving their systems. So that's another good sign as well. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, 
again, thank you so much for the support and the likes and the subscribes. Have a good evening.